talking to the Rolex wearing, diamond ring wearing, kiss stealing, woo, wheeling, dealing, limousine riding, jet flying, son of a gun, and I'm having a hard time holding these alligators down. G5 Jeff TV, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, please share this video, support your boy, support good content at all times, all social media is in the description box, and please hit that bell icon so you can be notified when I drop that heat, this video is sponsored by my boy Fast Classic, his mixtape is in the description box, it is absolutely free, definitely give him a download, give him a listen, and this video was sponsored by my boy Matt, definitely check his apparel out on IG at we or from, now, Saddam Ali, uh, we all know Saddam Ali for beating Miguel Cotto in Miguel Cotto's last fight of his career. He took his second loss in the last three fights against a guy named Anthony Young. Who? Anthony Young. Who? Yes, Anthony Young. Yes, I had to box wreck him. Yes, I had to do a little bit of homework on Anthony Young, but... He stopped Saddam Ali on the zone. And this is the second time that Saddam Ali has been stopped in the last three fights. First time he got stopped was against Jaime Munguia and then this Anthony Young fight. Now, the reason I'm even bringing this up is because I, I heard some people do some videos about Saddam Ali. And some of these people I, I got a lot of respect for, respect their boxing knowledge, respect them as YouTube channels, YouTube boxing personalities, got a high level of respect for some of these people. But I, I seen a couple of videos where guys were just saying like, Saddam Ali is done. He needs to retire. This, that, and the third. Like, and I, I really got to call these people out. I'm not calling them out by name. I'm not calling them out by channel. But just from one boxing fan to another, from one person that covers boxing to another person that covers boxing, I, I got to get at the people that are saying Saddam Ali is done. And he needs to retire. And I'm not getting at y'all for having that opinion specifically because of Saddam Ali. I, I got to get at that opinion for a couple of other reasons. Number one, Saddam Ali fought outside of his weight class against Miguel Cotto. Now, when other fighters fight outside of their weight class and you like that fighter then you'll say that fighter is quote unquote daring to be great but if another fighter does it then y'all say oh it was a setup when Saddam Ali fought Miguel Cotto nobody said it was a setup because everybody thought Saddam Ali was going to lose including myself but nobody said Saddam Ali was daring to be great. Nobody said anything. He just went in and fought his fight. And Saddam Ali won that fight fair and square against Miguel Cotto. So now he was a champion at 154. He became a champion at 154. So then... Saddam Ali gets matched up with Jaime Munguia. And I'm doing a flashback here because I'm I'm as I'm covering this, I'm I'm calling folks out as well. Saddam Ali first title defense was against Jaime Munguia. Jaime Munguia, 21 year old kid, raw, but a big kid, big 154 pounder. Saddam Ali goes up against Jaime Munguia. Saddam Ali gets stopped by Jaime Munguia. And what was the first thing 
that people were saying Oscar De La Hoya set up Saddam Ali. He set up Saddam Ali. And I even said it back then. I was just like, anybody that says Oscar De La Hoya set up Saddam Ali with Jaime Munguia is a motherfucking fool. I said it back then and I'm saying it right now. If you think Oscar De La Hoya and Golden Boy set up Saddam Ali by giving him Jaime Munguia, you are a fucking fool and you don't know your boxing. And I'm going to tell you why. How the hell do you set up a champion? I explain that to me. How do you set up a world champion? Saddam Ali beat Miguel Cotto who was a legitimate champion. So Saddam Ali had a legitimate belt and won it from a legitimate champion, then how the hell do you set up a world champion? And number two, why nobody said Saddam Ali was daring to be great? When he went up to 154 pounds from 147 but everybody loves Mikey Garcia he goes up from 135 to 147 he gets his ass whipped and he gets praised explain that to me nobody said Saddam Ali, Ali was daring to be great Kell Brook went from 147 to 160 he did a damn good job against Gennady Golovkin but it cost him an eye injury Y'all don't give Kell Brook no credit no more. Y'all say he's done. Y'all didn't say Kell Brook was daring to be great. Y'all said he's dumb. Y'all throw this daring to be great thing on if y'all like the fighter or not. So now I'm going to fast forward to this Anthony Young fight. He has this fight on the zone. Obviously, it's meant for Saddam Ali to get back on track. Saddam Ali is supposed to get back on track with this fight with Anthony Young. Who? Yes, Anthony Young. Anthony Young does his thing. Congratulations to him. And he stops Saddam Ali. And all I hear is video after video after video of people saying Saddam Ali is done. Saddam Ali is done. Saddam Ali needs to retire. If you think Saddam Ali is done, that's one thing. But when you say the man needs to retire, that's when I got to check you. That's when I got to check you. I've been meaning to do this video for a couple of weeks and I haven't got around to it, but I'm glad I'm getting to it right now because Julian J. Rock Williams said something very important after he won his title against Jerry Swift Heard. And he said, y'all got to stop putting these fighters to the wayside after they take a loss. That shit is 100% facts. The same people that say Saddam Ali needs to retire probably should have said that about J-Rock Williams after he took the Jamal Charlo loss. But what did J-Rock Williams do? He went back to the drawing board, came back, and now he's a unified champion at 154. I'll give you another example. Manny Pacquiao. Manny Pacquiao looked like he was dead against Marquez. Did Manny Pacquiao retire? No. He got back on his shit. He just beat Adrian Broner. And now he got a pay-per-view with Keith Thurman. If he beats Keith Thurman, he might be going up against Earl Spence for some type of unification. Come on. There's been plenty of guys that have gotten knocked out there's plenty of guys that have gotten stopped and they still continue with their career. Now, some guys, yeah, they may be done after that, but they don't retire. Like, I got a big problem with the R word, retire. You want Saddam Ali to retire because he got stopped twice in his last three fights. Why? Did you have Saddam Ali as some great fighter? No. Was he ever a great fighter? No. Does he ever had a potential of being great? No. Is he a good fighter, solid fighter? Absolutely. 
But the main reason why it's dumb for you to say Saddam Ali needs to retire is because Saddam Ali in neither one of those stoppages took a beating over the course of 9, 10, 11, 12 rounds. He got stopped early in early in those fights, second, third round. So he didn't take a sustained beating. If you think Saddam Ali is done, okay, cool. But to say the man needs to retire, that's just disrespectful. Like, it's too many fighters that have been stopped. There's too many fighters that's been knocked out, and they come back, and they try to redeem themselves. At the end of the day, it's the fight game. It's the fight business. Not everybody's Floyd Mayweather that can have a perfect record, unblemished record. Boxing, it's more to it than just a guy having an O. If a guy takes a loss, that just means there's a redemption story possibly on the horizon. Saddam Ali, you got stopped twice in the last three fights, man. Continue to fight on. Continue to do your thing. And if you want to retire, it's because you want to retire. And not because somebody don't like the fact that you got stopped twice in the last three fights. And they think you're done. And they think you need to retire. Y'all let me know what y'all think in the comment section. g 5 TV. hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. Please share this video, support your boy. Support good content at all times. I appreciate y'all. Peace.